you know, in the last message, I was talking about theologians of glory versus theologians of the cross. And I was just thinking about how that can be applied to different Christian concepts, because there's really two different approaches to uh, any given concept um, or principle, one by the theologians of glory and one by the theologian of the cross. And I was thinking about transformation. You know, we have this idea that transformation, uh, you know, the Bible says, be not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? Um, we think that this means a gradual and incremental uh, changing of our mind as God deals with this layer and that layer and this layer of uh, things in us. You know, first he dealt with your pride and then he dealt with your um, self-loathing and then he dealt with your strife and then he dealt with your uh, lust, you know, as if all these different things need to be dealt with and it's just endless and like he's just lit he's just got you on this journey of tweaking all these little things so that incrementally you become less lustful more humble more loving less self-centered you know um and under those kind of teachings uh it's what you find is it's endless. I mean, it just goes on and on forever. You're always praying about this. And the minute you get that one solved, supposedly another one pops up, you know, and then you go and deal with that one. And then the other thing that you thought you overcame popped up. You never get out of it. Why is that? Well, it's because you're in the flesh <laughs> transformation. According to, the theologian of the cross or the word of the cross is a transfer out of the old and into the new transformation is an acknowledgement of things that are true being renewed in the spirit of my mind and being renewed in my mind means that I'm acknowledging the things that are true because of the gospel, the truths that are in Christ that are also in me. And as my mind is set on these things, I'm now walking according to the Spirit. Because those who are according to the Spirit set their mind on the things of the Spirit. So to really, really it's just a matter of walking in the flesh or in the Spirit. What I need is the cross to be applied to my flesh by the supply of the Spirit. If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. To live in a transformed way, is just to walk in the Spirit by having a mind set on things above. And it's kind of all or nothing. You're either in the flesh or you're either walking in the flesh or in you're walking in the Spirit. It's not an incremental uh, tweaking of this and tweaking of that and handling yourself and dealing with yourself. See, that's the theologians of glory who really capitalize on that incremental transformation thing, um, they want to bring you in bondage to getting you to think, oh yeah, I really needed that because I'm working on this. And I really needed that from them because I'm working on this. And so now their ministry and their glory come becomes something you supposedly need. You know, their gifts, their signs, their manifestations of glory that are apart from the cross of Christ that don't lead you to the cross of Christ, but lead you to them and their gift. Uh, that is the, the realm of the flesh. That's all the realm of the flesh, but the realm of the spirit is on the other side of the cross. And the cross says, no, I'm not dealing with this and that and this and that. If God showed me those things, it's because he wants to show me the root of the problem that just won't go away, which is the flesh.
the root of my pride, the root of my cold heart, the root of my self-centeredness, the root of my lust is the flesh with the sin that dwells in it. And the only answer God has for the flesh is the cross of Christ. And he crucified the flesh there on the cross. I was crucified with him. So I need to just present myself to God by faith, acknowledging this body of truth related to my death with Christ and, uh, and present myself as one who's alive from the dead and say, Lord, you be the life in me. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I've been crucified with Christ. So yes, God does, um, show you things about yourself about your flesh but it's not for the purpose of you to introspect and deal with those things it's to show you that you're in the flesh now before you learn what the flesh is and that it's condemned you will respond by thinking god's trying to deal with me about my pride god's trying to deal with me about humility god's trying to deal with me about patience god's trying to deal with me about meekness and gentleness but the fact is, God's trying to deal with you about being in the flesh, and the flesh is the source of all these things. And that's what baptism is. Baptism, remember the baptism of John, he, he said he, God was going to cut the axe to the root because the bad tree can't bear good fruit. The flesh cannot bear anything that serves God. It's got to be cut to the root. And so God does let you go through periods where he does sort of assault you with all the things about you that um, are a problem. But the purpose of that is not to get you to incrementally transform yourself uh, and deal with those things. It's for you to learn to realize that the flesh is an absolute problem before God and to get you to cry out, who will deliver me from this body of death? And what he wants to do then is to draw you to himself and show you the truth in the gospel about how he dealt with your flesh. He put it on the cross. He terminated it. He destroyed the body of sin. He buried you with, in baptism into the death of Christ. He circumcised your flesh. He put it off in his death and he died to sin once for all. His death was your death. His death swallowed up your sin. He condemned it in his flesh and deprived it of its power. It will not rule over you if you walk in the spirit. But what does it mean to walk in the spirit? It means increasingly my mind is set on the realization of what I have in Christ. That's what my mind is set on. And I'm following the witness of the spirit that bears witness that I'm a child of God. And I see that there's no condemnation for me. And even though these things are true of my flesh, God has not rejected me, but has accepted me and given me mercy and even qualified me to be a minister of reconciliation. And I don't let these things about me shut me up. I just don't let them dominate me because I've learned by the gospel to put off the old man and put on the new man, to put on Christ, to put on the new creation by the renewing, renewing of the mind. And when it talks about putting on the new man, it puts it in the context of renewing. And renewing is really the transformation. I've said that before, that so many people think that sanctification and is uh, what we're doing, but really, more accurately, it's renewing and transformation uh, and transformation is the transfer out of the realm of the flesh in the way I think and into the spirit I think not of what is true of my flesh I think what is true of me in Christ and I walk by faith in that truth and I yield myself to God as if it is true otherwise there's no way I could do a ministry you know, there's no way I could get on here and teach the word um, with a sensitive, the kind of sensitive conscience I have without learning to reckon myself dead and reckon that what, uh, 
what is true in the gospel is true in me. And I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, and I'm accepted in the beloved, and he has not a rebuke for me, but an embrace. And when I give myself to him, um, he lives in me. You know, that that's the only way I could in good conscience keep preaching the word. Because otherwise, I would collapse under the weight of all the accusations and condemnation that tries to get heaped up on me by people and uh, of all stripes, you know, uh, saying this and that. Because, see, here's the thing. The devil knows that the law applies to your flesh. And all he has to do is, if you have a sensitive conscience, is tell you what's true of your flesh. And you'll go, yeah, you're right. That is true of me. That's who, And you'll think that's who you are, unless you get your mind renewed. Yeah, my flesh is all these terrible things. It is. But I'm not going to let my flesh rule the day. I don't walk in the flesh. I don't fight in the flesh. And I definitely don't want to minister in the flesh. I have to walk in the spirit. And the way I've learned to do it is to preach the gospel to myself. And to acknowledge that which is true. Uh, concerning what God has accomplished for me in Christ. That's it. It's that simple. I mean, I know I have a way of talking that's kind of makes things sound complicated, but it's really not. It's very simple. I always say it. Preach the gospel to yourself. It will bring you into the spirit. It will renew your mind. And then you'll have a transformation because when you're walking in the spirit, you won't fill the lust of the flesh. The flesh will be subdued. The flesh will be underneath. That doesn't mean it won't creep up sometimes. That doesn't mean that sometimes people won't see your flesh because we have the flesh. We have a treasure in an earthen vessel. But the Bible says we're not to know each other after the flesh. We have to learn to know each other according to what's true of us in Christ. Um, and so, you know, we can either take the accuser's side or we can take God's side. If you know someone's a brother in Christ, you know he's the righteousness of God in Christ, then you're not trying to uncover his flesh. You're trying to minister the gospel to him because the gospel is the only way for that person to walk in the spirit and deal with the flesh. God's not trying to get him to deal with his pride, his uh, coldness, his uh, lack of love, his lack of patience individually what he's trying to do is get him to walk in the spirit so that he could put to death the deeds of the body the body is subdued under the power of the cross when we walk in the spirit so that is the cross view the theologian of the cross will see that you know what i need is a transfer out of the flesh i'm walking in the flesh if i see pride if i see you know offense if i see all these things popping up it's it's i'm walking in the flesh and uh like peter said he lacks these virtues um is blind and has forgotten that he was purged his sins so the way to get back is to go back to the gospel go back to the source of power go back to the answer which is christ and him crucified and me crucified with him. And he's made peace with God for me. See, I don't have any answer for any of the accusations. And I've said this before, too. Um, just accept all the accusations as true. Really, that's the way to, you know, deal with it is, okay, Satan, every accusation you just threw at me is true of my flesh. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to come to God with blood of Jesus Christ who shed his blood for my sins. And I'm going to overcome your accusations by the blood of the lamb. And I'm going to testify that he has redeemed me and saved me and reconciled me to God and made peace between me and God. And he says, who is he that will condemn you? It is God who justifies you. Who will lay a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies Christ who intercedes for us. You better take God's side when it comes to dealing with the saints, we have to, uh, or else we're going to just find ourselves in the flesh and defeated all the time. Um, so that's the other thing about mind renewing. If you look at it in Romans 12, it says, uh, 
be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God, right? Um, and then it says, let no one think more highly of himself than he ought because we're all members of the body. Sorry, I don't have it in front of me. But the point is that we are members one of another. We're members in a household of a family and we're supposed to be conscious of the fact that we are just members of the body. We, yes, we each have special gifts. That's true. But we're members of the body. We can't reject other members of the body uh, by knowing them according to the flesh and trying to uncover them, you know, number one. <laughs> um, or just, you know, walking in the flesh and seeing ourselves as these individuals that are worth fighting for. We're not worth fighting for. It's not worth fighting to uh, justify myself before men. If men accuse me and want to know me after the flesh, then let them accuse and let the accusation stand. So be it. That is what my flesh is. But I've been crucified with Christ and I'm a member of the body of Christ. So, uh, yeah, this is what the cross brings us to versus the theologian of glory will have this incremental view of transformation where God's trying to deal with me about this and God's trying to deal with me about that. And, uh, Oh, what if, what if I really am, you know, uh, as proud as they say I am, I better work on that. Right No, that the, what we all are, we, you know, Martin Luther said the greatest Pope I fear is the Pope in my own heart. We eventually realize that we are the enemy of the cross. We are the enemy of the gospel. We are the enemy of God. And yet he reconciled his enemies to himself. And that old man has been put to death. And so we don't hold on to him. We don't treasure him. We don't try to defend him. We have to let him go to the cross. This is liberty. It is liberty because that's what Paul said, you know, I'm crucified to the world and the world to me. I'm not going to boast in anything but cr the cross of Christ through whom the world is crucified to me and I to the world. And he was talking about the religious environment that that all these uh, glory seekers wanted everybody to have a badge um, in their flesh about their own righteousness and their own spirituality. Uh, and Paul said, no, I renounce all of that. You know, I'm not, I'm not even going there. I am dead to it. Let them think what they want. Um, I'm not here to please people. I'm here to preach the gospel. And I, I already know it's going to make enemies because I'm going to have to correct when correction is needed. According to the truth, I'm going to have to rebuke when rebukes are needed. How can I do that? If I'm worried about what people think and whether these accusations are true and I'm a think th th theologian of glory incrementally trying to transform myself and deal with this and that and this and that. And I'm all self-conscious and self-focused. Paul got to a point where he said, I don't even judge myself. I'll let Christ deal with it at the day of Christ. You know, we're not looking at ourselves introspectively, turning inward anymore, trying to figure out what's wrong with us and what needs to be changed. What we are is crucified with Christ. And now we're raised together with him to walk in newness of life based on the fact that our mind is set on the things that God has revealed concerning what he did for us in Christ in reconciling us to himself, raising us with him, giving us his life, all of the good things that are in the gospel, which are our not, are now in us, true in us. Um, so yeah, I'm going to listen to this back and see if it made sense. It's kind of hard to get out.